I don't, don't, I don't, do, I, I don't get to do Wednesdays that much. I guess I could, but I'm just so thankful for all the gifts in the body. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do a little bit of talking about. Thank you, guys. Uh, tonight is, um, uh, <clears throat> I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Um, it's, it's, it's such an honor to be uh, amidst great company. And I, don't, I think we need to hear that more. Um, there's a statement um, uh, that we've been talking about uh, a little bit lately, and that is, uh, you have something that I don't, and I need what you have. And I'm going to say that again. You have, and this would be me talking to you, but this would be you talking to me. This would be you talking to the one on the right. This would be you talking to the one on the left, the one that's just all over. You have something I don't, and I need what you have. Man, I'm telling you, that's how God designed it. That's what, even as Pastor Lana was talking about uh, tonight, just about how God, uh, he he designed it to where where, uh, he's always looking for our good. He designed it to where the body, when you get born again, he talks about, man, get in a place, get hooked up to a vine where there's life flowing, where there's what, somebody, what you have what I don't, and I need what you have, and each piece is so significant, and each piece is so wonderful and lovely. And, you know, sometimes um, we can, critique, uh, a lot of times we, we stop being as thankful as we should because maybe our, our whatever doesn't look like somebody else's. Have you ever not been as thankful for your body because it didn't look quite the way you wanted it to look because you've been looking at somebody else's? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, I'm all, maybe, you, maybe you've said like, oh, I'm overweight or I'm this or whatever, and you're not as thankful for yourself, but the fact of the matter is you're not in the hospital. I mean, like, you could go on of all how healthy you are, how you can run and play with your kids and all this, but yeah, you didn't look like the magazine or the Photoshop or whatever it might be, but I'm telling you, when you start looking at the wrong things and you, you and start comparing, you, you stop being thankful for, uh, for all that God uh, has set there, and you stop realizing, listen, all around you that were places that God has set you where he's directed you to, to get planted, there are those that have what you don't, and there are those, and they have what you need. They have what I need. And I will just, Pastor Evan and myself, we wanted to tell you the guys that tonight, that you have what we don't, and we need what you have. And uh, I hope with all my heart, uh, our prayer that would, would be that that would be what is, uh, what comes out of us. When I see somebody sitting, you know, by themselves or when I'm, or, that I would recognize, man, they got something that I don't and I need what they have mm-hmm. and vice versa. And, um, and so we wanted to kind of talk uh, about that uh, tonight and just really what we saw in our heart was just bringing encouragement. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the whole, this whole, uh, and, and I'd tell you this, let's not take ourselves so seriously. Like, I, don't, I, think, I think sometimes God's picture of church when we come in and we're like, it's like we, we're trying if we can just eke out a little bit more faith. Yeah. How many of you know when you yeah. put too much pressure, you know, I sneezed and tooted at the same time today. <laughs> Bad things happen. It, it really happened. I was trying to hold in the sneeze. Anyway. Yeah, so praise the Lord. It happened. Anyway, it's what you, it happens when you're drink, drinking greens and working out and, you know, everything's getting different. But anyway, as we were saying, when you try to eke something out, when you're under pressure, it, think, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Seriously, church should be fun. Like when we come to church, he said, David said, I was glad when they said, let's go worship God. Yeah. What does it look like? It looks like joy. It looks like when we come in, man, these people got what I didn't. They, and they have what I don't. And I need what they have. And guess what? It's like finding that, reaching into your pocket and you go, oh, I put these pants on. It tells me that they probably didn't go through the wash. All right. But I, found, I, reached, I was like, oh, hey. And then I pulled it out and it was... 
Oh, ho, ho, it was a five. I thought it was only three bucks. <laughs> yeah. For real. But you know how I was going to say, you know, it's only three bucks, and I was going to get all excited about three. Because, you know, sometimes we just down count three, but I found seven. <laughs> Woo, I'm rich. Huh? Yeah, I know. That, that's right. No, don't put that up there. <laughs> Got to keep what you can. All right. <laughs> Whatever. I know. I'm teasing. But, you know, I could, you know how, it, how wonderful it is when you've been looking for something for a long time and you've lost it and, you, and then you've stopped looking for it? And you don't even realize that you've been missing it and you've been going through life without it. Man, I'll tell you, when we come to church and we come to the place that God says that if you, those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they'll be like a tree that doesn't know when the, when the summer heat comes. Because they're drawing from what? Something they don't have. See, that tree, he's, sitting, he's planted by the river and, and he, within himself, he would, he would wither and he would die. But because of where God set him, there was, there was a flourishing about his life. There was a joy. And, and I, I just, I, I wanted you all, all to hear that. With, we wanted to encourage you, yeah. all of us tonight. And just that, man, you have what we don't. And we, we need what you have. And let's, let's, let's think a little bit differently about how we do uh, and we walk with God. Mm-hmm. He's our father. He's our father and he loves us. He loves us so much that we, we're the, he, he, he sings over us, the Bible says. Last night we were at prayer and at, towards the end I, I just heard in my heart, just, just a, a cry in my heart, Lord. And I just said, Father, tell us the story again. So have you, uh, have you ever asked your daddy um, <clears throat> to tell you a story? Maybe your grandpa or your papa. Tell me a story. My kids... Uh, asked me to tell them stories about when I was a kid and I went and stole apples with my go-kart and, uh, or just when I got in trouble or, you know, just to realize that, that I'm normal too, right? And they want to hear sometimes the same story multiple times. Yeah, tell, tell us that story about, and, you know, and you always remember another detail. And, and I don't even think it's that you remember another detail when you say it, but they hear another one. And I just found myself asking the Lord, uh, Lord, tell me this story. I said, Father, tell me that story again. Tell me the story of Jesus again. Tell me the story of Jesus again. Of your love for us. Let me hear that story again. And there's a joy when you hear him speak of his love for you. And because he loves you, he will. He won't leave you. I want to open uh, our, our Bibles tonight just real quick. Um, and, we, and, the, and we just wanna, just wanted to say thank you and just uh, pray over you tonight kind of of a thing. Mm-hmm. And um, Joshua chapter 1. Uh, and we're going to just start in verse, verse 5. And... And really, again, the, the heart of, beat of tonight was really that it, it, we would be encouraging uh, yeah. to you. you have anything you want to add? Yeah, no, moment? just um, like he said, in Seeking the Lord, because we knew that in January we were doing um, the Wednesdays and then the obviously first Wednesday. But um, and just Seeking the Lord, like last week, because I taught last week and then knowing this week was coming, it's just like, okay, Lord, what do you want to say? You know, after you get done ministering and you know you're up again in a week, it's like, okay, Lord, what, what are you wanting to say? And I don't know about that. <laughs> and um, I just heard so strong just to um, just lo- like show love and appreciation and thanks and encouragement. And how many of you know... Um, if you have if you have um, a parent who just encourages all the time, what happens? You have like entitled kind of spoiled kids, right? But if you have a parent who just disciplines and corrects all the time, what happens? You have someone who's just beat down. So part of the pastoral anointing is number one, hearing what to feed the sheep. But then also understanding there's times and seasons the Holy Spirit's wanting to do correction. But he doesn't just sit and correct, 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 right? 
Because what would happen, we'd just be like, I can't do it. I can't measure up. I can't, right? So what he does is he'll correct, but then there's also times where he'll encourage. I told him just the other day we were out um, with the boys when it was nice and we were um, running. And it was funny because we it was nice out and I said, oh, I think we should go for a run. And Caleb said, I'll go with you. And I was like, really? R- running all the way to the stop sign and, um, and back? And he said, what are you doing? Oh, okay. And he said, uh, <laughs> and he said, um, he said, yeah, I want to go. And the other boys were like, oh, we'll go, whatever. And then I realized why Caleb wanted to go is because for Christmas he got a mini bike, and his idea of going with us on a run wasn't to actually run; it was to ride his mini bike. Um, anyway, so the boys hitched a ride a few times with him while we were running, but I was last. And um, running toward the stop sign. And Caleb comes up on his mini bike, you know, riding or whatever. He goes, come on, Mom. You can do it. I believe in you. Come on, Mom. Don't quit now. You can do it. And I was kind of laughing, but I was like, you know, that is so sweet. Like, the other boys are like, Mom, you're last. Come on, you know, like. And here Caleb's on his mini bike, which probably was why he was encouraging because he's not out of breath and he's just on his mini bike. But um, I'm like, I told him he's like a little encourager. And what that did for me was like, guys, it was not even that hard of a run, but it was like, wow. And it it just kind of put wind in my cell. And I thought, what happens when we're that for people? What happens when I'm that for people? Instead of looking, okay, mom's last and... Thank you. Instead, of, and in a house full of boys, it's like, golly, you got to up your game. But um, instead of pointing out just mom's last, mom's last, he found he found something good. Well, what do we do for people? Those people that he's in connection with, and sometimes it's the ones we're closest to or around more. It can be easy to see everything they're not good at, all of their flaws, all of their wrong, but. What has God called us to be that encourager? And you know, when you encourage like that, it puts wind in people's sails, doesn't it? And so that's just what we saw tonight was just like the Holy Spirit wanting to put wind in our body to um, just as an encouragement and saying, you know, it's good to hear sometimes, good job. It's good to hear, and you know, the Lord, and like he said, sometimes we can come into church and it's just like, I got more to do, I got to do this, I'm not doing this right. I mean, how many of you battle those thoughts on a daily basis? I do just as a mom, like, what the heck am I doing, right? You battle, you battle those thoughts, but you know what? The Holy Spirit will come so often and go, no, look what you're doing right. No, look at this, you're doing a good job, and we need that, and so that's just what we saw for tonight was just um, the Holy Spirit saying good job. And encouraging us as a body, amen. Were you wanting to show something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sent you a photo up to the iMac. It's amazing technology. What the technology is amazing. Um, I have. We have ushers. Uh, you, you pass those things out that we have. See We're if gonna you can have pull fun. We're gonna have fun. Dun, dun, dun. Did you get it? Maybe. My pants are unzipped. What? Oh, they're halfway. The cow's still in the barn. I just had two texts from our, I just had two texts from our staff. One that said his pants are unzipped, and the other said his fly. Praise the Lord. It was it was mostly up. Yeah, you only seen the top little little bit there. All right. <laughs> like in other words, it wasn't unzipped. All right. I don't know what what's going on tonight. Praise the Lord. It's 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 the fu- it's the fun anointing. Oh, did you find the, did I get, did you get the picture that come through? Yeah? One minute. I think that was that a one minute or one minute? I can't tell if it was. I couldn't see. Praise the Lord. Uh, Take one down, pass it around. Uh, Pick out your favorite flavor. Okay, who is a green who is a green apple blow pop fan? Green apple. Yes. I wonder what the most popular one is. Who despises the green apple flavor? Oh, horrible. Horrible. Okay, grape. Okay, grape blow pop or grape tootsie pop? Grape blow pop. Hands up. 
Grape Tootsie Pop. Yeah? Grape, grape and we're grape up there? Okay, check out this photo right here. That's my hottie from back in middle school, which is sitting right here. Guys, I'm sorry that that is speech. <laughs> so, oh, geez. This is, if you can't tell, this is me. This is my wife. I look like a boy <laughs> with long hair. This is one of, uh, Guys, that this is outfit one of Evan's is friends from high school. This is one of my friends. These are, these are our buds from, this is our crew. This is a they. Okay? Listen, can I give one of them? Hashtag 90s kids, right? So, yes, we've been together since seventh grade. We didn't break up or any of that stuff. We said we're going to get married. I was a year older than her. I had to go to high school. She was still in middle school. It was like really tough that we're going to get married and we're going to go to Bible college after we get married and we're going to serve Jesus together. That was our goal. You and guys can eat your blow pops. Hey, thank you. Uh, you and this one needs another one. Give her two. All right, listen. So here's the deal. This blow pop deal. This picture simply represents this, like that you would have the right they. This crew, like it's fun. The crew that you have, the people that God's called you with should be fun. It should be lighthearted. There's the attaboy, there's the pat on the, 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 uh, on the rump and saying, hey, get back in the game. There's, there, there's the tough talk. How many of you know Having the right they makes all the difference. You can hear what God says to you, but there's something about hearing what God says to you and then having somebody echo what God said as well. And, and tell you that, 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 hey, guess what? God set you here and you, you're echoing, you're agreeing with what he said. Yeah. I want you to see this in Joshua chapter 1. And I just thought it would be fun to just pass us some blow pops, you know, because... Blow pops church. are awesome. You could give it to your kids if you don't want we it. We should and, have know, a biggest bubble blowing contest. Okay. But that's Peter Burt. That was Peter Burt. Anyway, we still have a handshake. You, you gotta have. You gotta have a they. Like I was gonna say, shake people's hands tonight. Give somebody a handshake, and you should be able to just like come up and be like, "Yeah, what's up, bro?" You know, like like you gotta have a. If you don't have somebody that you have a secret handshake with, you gotta get. A, you gotta get a they. Like, you know, you need to be able to snail. Oh, I'm just kidding. Snail. But, you know, that's this guy right here. Tommy Jackson. I'm just saying, you need to get a they, all right? Your crew, because there's nothing that will encourage you. There is nothing designed to encourage you and to keep you like the right they. Listen to, listen to this, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. And again, this is just about encouraging us to, to stand strong. Listen, uh, and, and, and that the God's with you. Listen to this. <clears throat> there, should not, um, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. This is God talking to Joshua. He says, he says as I was with Moses, that's how I'm going to be with you. I won't fail you. And I won't forsake you. And he says, be strong and of good courage. Why? Why can you be strong and of good courage today? Because he's not leaving. That's right. As he was with Moses, coming through in big ways. That's how he's still coming through. That's who he still is. He's not leaving. He's not forsaken. He's forsaken you. I had a, a, um, a friend from back when I, I was in construction, and uh, I was a painting contractor for years while we were uh, down here, and, and it was just wonderful to meet so many people, and God really blessed my business, and <clears throat> there's this one gentleman in particular, um, uh, a couple, really a brother, a family, and they laid tile, precious, precious people, maybe you call them a little rough around the edges, but that's what I loved about them, because they were just real, anyway, I, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and uh, I got to, I saw him get out of his truck, and he's coming into a house that's being brand new. It's being built there right by the intermediate school. And I was like, oh, I pulled in there. I was like, man, what's up? And he's like, 
Nate, you know? And uh, he's like, I thought that was you, you know? He's like, what happened to your silver truck? Because I had that same truck for like 15 years. And uh, I was like, I got this new one this year, you know? And, uh, and I was like, man, it's so good to see you. He's like, are you still up there at church, you know? Yeah, 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 you know? And, uh, but today I, I saw he posted, I guess he started on Facebook, and um, he posted, I'm thankful that God never gave up on me. And I said, you know, never. For me, that uh, God's not, he's never. He's not, not quitting on you. He's, he's not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. Listen, this is the people that you need in your life are the people that, that understand that. And they also re- reflect that very say, the same love of God because God hasn't backed out on them. Listen, they're, they're standing in your corner the same way. You know, Joshua had this whole time when, 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 when Moses was, lead, he led the children of Israel out of the wilderness. And, and from that place, that we know that, that many died in the wilderness. And so Joshua was, in a sense, he grew up with all, all, all the kids that were, you know, that he had a lot of young, young people, 40 and under, was the crew that he was leading. And it's just really interesting what we're going to get to here in a moment. Anyway, he says, because um, how they echoed him, how they echoed what God said, how they, how they said, yes, we can, yes, we will, let's go, let's take it. He goes on to say, um, be strong and of good courage for unto this people shit. You, he said, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to divide the land of inheritance. You're going to do what, you, you're going to finish the work that I started. You're going to finish. I think sometimes we just got to hear that we're going to see it. And, and which I swore unto your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. That's, that's your next step. Like you don't know what to do, very, do next, be strong and be courageous. Face it. Be strong and courageous to take that step. And only be strong and very courageous that way observe to do according to all the law which the Moses' servant commanded you. He said, don't turn from the right or the left, but uh, that you may prosper wherever you go. And he says, this book of the law, uh, don't let it depart out of your mouth. In other words, keep what I said before you. This is why we come to church, to be reminded of what God said why? Because if I don't know what he said, when I go beyond these four walls, I don't have anything that's going to change anybody's life. It's God's word that has the ability to, 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 to break the, the, the sea and lift the, to make it to walls to where it's dry land. I'm telling you, we serve a miracle working God. The only reason we're talk, are even talking about spiritual uh, gifts and things like that, let's just talk, it's not to be like, woo, and get all spiritual. Listen, they are tools to be a witness. God gave us the Spirit of God to be a witness for God, to testify. And you know, God, he, He's still a miracle-working God. Amen. And if we, would be, uh, if we would be more concerned about how others getting their breakthrough than us missing it, we would be seeing a whole lot more breakthroughs. So we got our eyes on, on others and we were moved with compassion because we saw them as sheep having no shepherd. Not, well, what if I miss it? What if I look stupid? What if they think I'm a flake? What if they think, what if, what if you obeyed the prompting of your heart, the, lo- the prompting of love, and you stood in the gap and just said, hey, can I, can I pray for you? And God just blew up. Because you can't do it anyway. All you can do is obey. You can pour out. That's what you can do. Because you're a vessel. So that's why we're talking about this kind of stuff. It's not to get all... If, if we're talking about be like spiritual things, oh, and it's all just to be right in here, and we can go really deep in God, that just makes me want to throw up. And it should make you want to throw up too. Because the purpose of a well, the deep place is to refresh and continue refreshing in a dry land. And that's our prayer is that this place would be a place that would just be like a spring that, and, and out of your bellies and out of our bellies there would be a flow of a river to, to your they, to the place that God has set you, that you would be the river, that you would be the river, that out of you would, would there would be a flow. That, and you, people say, man, man, you got something I don't. And I need what you have. 
That's why we come. That's why, we, that's why we're talking about, we're talking about, man, and you'll find that there's a flow. And guess what? You'll be refreshed because you refresh others. The Bible says that. You're looking for refreshment? Let me tell you. It starts with you realizing, listen, that you, it's out of our bellies, and they have something you don't, and you need, and vice versa. Let's keep going here. So he goes on to say, be strong and be courageous. Um, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous and, and, do, and be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'm going to say that again because somebody just needs to hear that tonight. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord hasn't left you because you made a mistake. He's not afraid of sin. He paid for it already. That's the story of Jesus. That's that, when we hear the story of his love for us, that, that's, that's what has the ability to cause. The Bible tells us that faith, um, you sh- Paul talks about, show me your, 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 your faith and I'll show you my works. But you know what causes works to come? From our faith, love. When we know the love of God, the things that we want to do in our heart, we, 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 our heart, it, it's amazing how powerful our heart is. It's what God's after. And from that place of our heart, I'm telling you, the praying, the, all, all the things that you, we would, you, could, you could live in this, on the side of do instead of the side of love. You can live on the side of do, or you can live on the side of love. The difference is simply, what are you hearing? Because he said, I, I've already paid the price for that. So I'm going to say it again. God is with you wherever you go. He's not leaving. He's not forsaking you. Anyway, he goes on to say this, verse 10. I'll just hit on this and then go right to 16 so we can do the last part and I'll get into uh, just some worship time. But uh, it says, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, then Joshua commanded, this is what's underlined, then Joshua commanded, he was encouraged of the Lord. He was encouraged of the Lord and he said, and he, he gave a command and over the next few verses, he gives a command and he tells us what, what I want you to do. All you little ones, all you this, all that. And, and until the, in verse 15, until the Lord gives your uh, brethren rest. And as he, um, this is, let me go out of, back out of King James. I switched over to Amplified on accident. Until the Lord has given your brethren rest, he has uh, given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord's God has given them. Then you shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it. So he says, guys, we're going in. We're going to fight. We're going to fight until the end, until you own it. So to some people, that's like to the end. Until you bring back what we're going for. He's saying, I'm making a bold ask. I'm going to make a a declaration to you that this is what God has said. Until you possess. And you know what they said? You know who said? Who? Who said it? Who's your they? You know what they said? They said this. All that you command us, we're going to do it. Well, maybe if it all works out. No. All that you command us, we'll do. And wherever you send us, we'll go. I'm telling you, Joshua had the right they. When you make a stand, and you've been in a battle, and you move with the conviction of your heart in the direction of the Lord, and you tell your wife, or you tell your friends, or you tell you blah, 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 man, I'm laying this down. Let's just use, this, use that as an example. And they tell you, <laughs> yeah, right. That's what you said last time. I gave it two weeks. I'm so sorry. You can be sorry, but you're just going to do it again. What's your problem? I, I, I wish you could just lead. Why don't you just be the leader? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll put, put, 
Just prove it to me. I won't believe what you say until you show me. Can you imagine if that's the day that he had? Like, what if, what if we just thought like this? What if we, we changed our, the way that we looked and we, we believed and we said what God would say about people and we would encourage them? What if it was just simply this is what encouragement looked like when somebody had what they, they and they would be, also that you would be, they would be able to share it with you that something that was in their heart, this. Not, yeah, I just don't think that could ever happen. What if you're like, man, this, that's awesome, man. I, I'll agree with you right now. That's encouragement. That's the right day. Let me ask, I have to ask myself that. Is that, is that me? Is that me? Do I approach things based upon how I see them or based upon what God would say? Because the fact of the matter is, you, you, you have something I don't, and I need what you have. How do you unlock all the things that are in people? By faith. That's how. By you saying what God says. How do you, how do you walk out the, the, the plan of God for your life? By listening to what God says and doing that. By faith. By, by hearing what he said. By, by hearing what he said in his word sharpening your ear, tuning your ear to where you would speak and he would lead and guide you, and then do that. Well, how do you, how do you unlock somebody uh, and, 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 and access the very things that are in them? By faith. Did you know that there's some, there's some places that have been locked up in people for so long, they need somebody, and, God said, and the very thing you need is in them, but it's going to take somebody unlocking them? I, I, I was uh, driving uh, yesterday with Landon uh, for, uh, on the way back from lunch, and he, we were somehow Kelly Clarkson came on, and um, the song, For a Moment, oh, I was in the, in the restaurant, it, it, For a Moment, some people wait a lifetime, for a moment, or whatever, like this, right? So I was like, wow, that's, that's been a minute since that song came out. And so we looked it up, 2002, Kelly Clarkson, 2002. And I'm like, wow, that was before kids. Anyway, Landon, that's how we got on that subject. And Landon said, have you heard that song um, by her that talks about how her dad beat her down? But her husband, layer by layer, I've never heard the song, but. He described it, and I said, that sounds really good, you know. But that layer by layer and piece by piece, her dad tore her down, but her husband built her up into who she is today. Listen, there, there, we have to come into agreement with what God says about one another. That right there will bring joy when they said, let us come to the house of the Lord. I got the right day. My they are there. And guess what we're doing? We're, we're, we're messing up the devil. We're bringing the kingdom. We're, we're, te- we're, we're going out and we're saying what God says. We're taking a land for him. I mean, all, everywhere you look, if you were to, everywhere you look, people are needing to hear what God has said. And so we gotta have, we got to have the right the right day. So I just wanted to hit on that. And then we were just wanted to pray this over, over them. And really it's just a read a, a, a verse. You want to share that? Yeah. Okay. We can have the band come. Um, we switched up first Wednesday. We wanted to share first. Yeah. What? We wanted to share first. Um, and then have a, a time of worship. Um, yeah. And just like he said, the right day and, um, how many of you have ever been around the right they before? And how many of you have been around the wrong they? <laughs> and it's so much better to be around the right they, which is why also, like he said, believing the best, speaking the best about others. And I love that. Let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad. 
And I've heard so many people who come into to this house and say, man, you just feel the genuine love of God. I just love coming in. From the moment I came in, it felt like family. From the moment I came in, I just felt loved and welcomed. Well, what is that? That causes them to say, man, I was glad. Do you know how many church people there are that it's like, I am not glad to go? And you know what that is? That's a product of the atmosphere and, the, and what's going on there. And, and the spirit that's taking place of division and strife. And this is why the love of God is so... Are you teaching on that coming up? Which is awesome, Mo is. Um, on Wednesdays, but just the love of God. And until you know how much you're loved, you can't love from that. And um, so just, <clears throat> just seeing the importance of love. And really tonight, that's one thing we just wanted to... Um, like he said, just share is just how much as your pastors, we love, we love you guys. We're so blessed. We're so honored. We say all the time um, in the house, just between ourselves, just how thankful we are. Um, I saw just the other day, I was reading a blog post and um, someone was writing and I think it was like a pastor, used to be a pastor. And he, I don't even know who he was or where he was from, but he just said, uh, man, ministry is just so tough. It's just so tough. And it just broke my heart because I thought, that is not how God intended it to be. That ministry, or you could say life, is so tough. God meant for it to be fun and joyful. Like, I don't picture Jesus. I mean, kids wouldn't want to come up to someone who was cranky. All of you who have little kids, like, people who are cranky, kids stay away. And I mean, Jesus wouldn't be saying, let the children come to me. Like the disciples had to stop him because they wanted to come to him. That he had, he had disciples. He had people following him. A grouch doesn't have people follow them. (laughs) He was fun. He enjoyed. And so that's one thing that we've just been just thankful for is just doing life together and that it's fun and just taking, I love that, um, Brother Joseph Morris said that before he gets up to minister, the Lord just tells him, just have fun. Like, I can hear God saying that to us. Like, as Beyond Church, like, have faith, believe me, you know, walk in victory, use your authority, do what I've called you to do, but do it with joy and have fun. Like, I don't want to get to the other side like, man, I should have enjoyed that time. Because when you're not enjoying it, and, and you're just going day to day and working and stressing, you're, you're not taking in the moments that you're supposed to be taking in and looking around and being thankful. And so that's what we heard was just encouraging you and also just like have fun, hence the blow pops. Yeah. Was just, that not fun? And just saying thank you. And so we, um, this, this passage is found in Philippians. We just wanted to read it and in a sense kind of pray it over you. It's found in the... Uh, Philippians 1, 3 through 11, it's in the message, but if you just close your eyes, we just wanted to speak to you from our heart um, and just declare this to you. We felt like this, these, these words were, uh, were writing that the letter of our own heart. And so we, uh, we wanted to read them to you. Every time that you cross our mind, we break out in exclamations of thanks to God. Each exclamation is a trigger to prayer. We find ourselves praying for you with a glad heart. We're so pleased that you've continued on in this with us, believing and proclaiming God's message. From the day that you heard it right up into the present, There has never been the slightest doubt in our mind that the God who started this great work in us would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. It's not all the fanciful for me to, it's not all fanciful for me to think this way about you, but my prayers and hopes have deep roots. We're not saying this just to speak in the wind. 
You have, after all, stuck with us all the way from the time of the hard places, the trials, and we came out of it in one piece. All of you have experienced with us the most generous help from God. He knows how much I love you, how much we love you and miss you, enjoy being with you. Sometimes we feel like as strongly about you as we feel that Christ feels about you. So this is our prayer. Our prayer for you is this, that your love would flourish and that you would not only love a lot, but you'd love well. That you'd love as God loves. He says, you, you need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere. No more just going through the motions, but intelligent. Living a lover's life, circumspect, exemplary, a life Jesus is proud of. Bountiful in fruits, prayers that you would overflow with fruits from your, from your soul that there would be a harvest from within that you could grab a hold of. That not only would it be enough for you to partake of, but others would be refreshed from it. Attractive to all, getting everyone involved in the glory for the praise of our Lord Jesus. We just bless you tonight. We just say thank you. We just tell you that you're enough, that you have the very thing that God needs. That you're valued. You're so, you're, 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 you're priceless. And God, it's not just that God, it's not that God couldn't, it's that God wouldn't do it without you. got to have that peace. And so we just pray encouragement right now over this body. Father, thank you for encouragement to stand, to, to take the next step forward. Father, I thank you for the bold steps that are needing to be taken. I thank you for just your love washing over this body, over this people. Lord, I thank you for the relationships that are supposed to be had, the right days, the combinations that would just unlock uh, just the doors that, that seem to uh, maybe you felt like you lost the key. Father, thank you for that, for the right combinations, for the right uh, connections of people, for life to flow. And I just thank you for healing, just healing uh, of wounded hearts tonight so that the connection could be more than just surface but heart connections and just for your grace to flow that we would see it and experience it like never before that there would be a running of our race together to the finish line and well done would be heard over and over and over again Father, we thank you for it. We give you honor in this place. And we say thank you for the one on the right, the left, those behind us, those serving, those that aren't here. And we just say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, why don't you guys stand up? We'll worship here for the next 15 minutes. Um, and we just saw this as just a time to come to the house and praise the Lord as a family and just... Honestly, have fun, be free, worship the Lord, thank him for all he's done for you this week, amen.